I'm just gonna give a second and let the waiting room clear. If everyone can make sure they're muted as they enter. Got it. Printed the agenda. Again, if everyone can make sure they're muted. And we will get started. Good afternoon. This is a hearing before the Boston Cannabis Board, the BCB. Today is May 4th, 2023. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. Before I review some procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good afternoon, thank you for joining us today. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I am chair of the Boston Cannabis Board and today we are joined by Commissioner Lisa Holmes, Commissioner John Smith and Commissioner Gabriel Camacho. All right. Thank you, Chairwoman Joyce. And my name is Jasmine Nguyen. I am the Boston Cannabis Board Manager and we are also joined by Allison Quinn who is the project manager for the BCB. While the public is encouraged to attend, there will be no additional public testimony accepted. We're going to take a couple of items out of order. We are going to be with our transactional matters. I will read each item into the record. I will then ask for comments from each board member. I will then ask if there's a motion, any questions to the motion, and then there will be a vote. Each board member has the ability to grant, grant with conditions, defer, reject without prejudice, which means the applicant can return any time with an application at the same location, or reject with prejudice, which means the applicant cannot reapply at the same location for one year. Again, we're taking matters out of order. So we're gonna be begin with Seven Peaks Retail LLC, DBA Seven Peaks. The proposed license premise is 54 Winter Street, downtown. The license type is a recreational cannabis dispensary license. The proposed hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and this in Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays. This is an equity applicant and there is a buffer zone conflict. Chairwoman Joyce, if you wanna begin with your comments. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, I will begin taking a look at this application's diversity inclusion plan. Um, it was not a very high score for me. Um, at the outset, I dismissed the Ostagai scholarship proposal. This is not what I would consider a program or benefit since Ostagai has not agreed to participating in such a scholarship program for their students and has actually voiced their opposition to this entire application. As far as location, they scored low for me as well. They noted that access to public transportation is the primary reason for choosing this location. Given the buffer zone issues, this is not enough of a reason, in my opinion, to make this application stand out. Access to public transportation is not what I would call special circumstances. Um, it's outside of the school buffer zone by 17 feet. And the school in question is a recovery high school. As I've said before in previous hearings, this location is not great. I don't believe this application did enough to overcome this, this barrier. It's also 600 feet away from Bridge Over Troubled Waters. I think there's other locations that would be uh, more appropriate. Stated, I have stated in the past, they stated actually at the hearing that this would bring much needed activation to this area. I don't agree. I do agree this area needs activation, but a retail cannabis establishment isn't what I would think would fill in that gap. Um, as far as their buffer zone goes, we have a statutory duty to begin from a place of opposition to any application within the buffer zone. For background purposes, I'll repeat myself as I have in previous hearings in August 2021, the City Council and Acting Mayor Kim Janey approved an amendment to the cannabis ordinance that strengthened the buffer zone for applicants and license holders, making the location more of a factor in the evaluation process. Location now accounts for 25% of the entire evaluation. And it's a key part of that section is whether or not there is another already licensed applicant nearby. Here, not only is there already another licensed applicant nearby, there are two existing cannabis establishments that, that hold HCAs within this buffer zone. As I mentioned in our voting meeting two months ago, we just don't know yet if we have reached saturation in the downtown area. In other areas of the city where we have voted to pierce the buffer zone, it's been a one-off situation but we have five other places in this instance and we don't know yet if the downtown can support it. Cannabis was legalized in the city with a buffer zone and we can't choose to ignore it. But in recent decisions in other parts of the city, the BCB and the ZBA have decided that piercing the buffer zone makes sense with more than 50 licenses to give out citywide 
in very few appropriate locations, some see the zone limit as an impediment to licensing. I think this business concept does not offer special circumstances for us to consider here. I don't see this as a business that's trying to get aside for all of, all of the other businesses in the area. I do not see this as an extraordinary application. Thank you, Chair Joyce. Um, Commissioner Holmes? Uh, not much to add. Um, I agree high, wholly with um, my chairperson. And again, I am totally against this because of the two schools, the Oster guy and Bridge Over Troubled Waters, just as we were about the previous um, applicant for this area. I, I agree. This is not the place to put a cannabis dispensary next to a group of you know, students who are trying to overcome their challenges. Commissioner Camacho? Give me that. I agree with uh, Chair Joyce. In my score sheet, they scored low on just about everything. Um, I think I gave them a high score for security, but on everything else, uh, they scored rather low. <laughs> Um, they said the starting wage would be uh, $20 an hour, and they're going to recruit um, residents of Boston. A living wage in Boston is over $22 an hour. Thank you. Commissioner Smith? Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff and, um, I agree with my other commissioners. Um, they did not score very high. And so... Um, yeah, I don't have much more to add. Chairman Joyce, is there a motion? Yes, I make a motion to reject this application with prejudice. I don't think there's anything they can do to improve the application because of the location. Okay. Is there a second? Commissioner Holmes, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and none opposed. So the application is rejected with prejudice, which means the applicant cannot reapply at this location for one year. The next item we have is 1220 Washington Street, Inc., DBA, the Boston Garden Dispensary. The proposed license premise is 1220 Washington Street, the South End. License type is a recreational cannabis dispensary license. The proposed hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Sunday, and this is an equity applicant. Chairwoman Joyce, do you wanna share your comments? Yes, um, I have a few comments here. I'm gonna jump into the community feedback and public support category. Um, Council Flynn opposed it, so they scored low as far as letters of support from elected officials. But I do wanna mention that half of the opposition that came in blames this application for the closing of Cathedral Station, and that's just not the case. That establishment was leaving anyways. The other half of the opposition, in my opinion, um, the tenor of it was more about, we just don't want this type of thing in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe that they want to live in a place with cannabis. Um, and there was some support. So I, balancing those two things, um, I think the opposition, some of it, in my opinion, could be dismissed because they're not looking at the actual um, application before them. Um, their safety and security plan was fine. I thought... Um, I'm not an expert on diversity and inclusion, but I thought they had a, a, built, a well built out plan. Um, some issues I have with location was the distance to the Pine Street Inn and the daycare center, the park and the Cathedral High School, but they're not things that I would um, use as um, you know, a complete deterrent here. Otherwise, I thought the application was pretty strong. Commissioner Holmes? I agree. Um, I, I, as I am with a lot of space, I, I, this location is well known to, to myself. I know exactly where it is. Um, the park across the street, I believe, is in the process of being renovated. So I don't know how much that would affect the neighborhood. I, I agree with Chairperson, Chairwoman Joyce, that a lot of the um, opposition here was from the not in my backyard. You can put it somewhere else, but I don't want it here. Um, the city council su um, support is definitely lacking, and um, it's really going to be a, a bit of a, a bit of a problem here. But the community—they had half of the community support, which which I thought was good. Their plans 
were very good. Um, I, the security plans were good and everything else. It's just really the, um, the difference in the opposition from the city councilors and the community support. But other than that, I do think that this license, uh, this application was, was very well done. Thank you, Commissioner Camacho. I agree with my uh, other commissioners. Um, they did score high in certain areas. I did find the uh, lack of support from the city uh, council um, problematic. Um, and yes, it was uh, not in my backyard, you know, dogs eating marijuana, but you know, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, so um, I also saw their uh, labor plan. They did plan to um, start higher than $20 an hour, um, which is much better. Um, and they do have uh, plenty of parking for customers and staff. So I thought that was very good. Thank you, Commissioner Smith. Jasmine, I'm pretty much reflective of the other commissioners. Thank you. Yes. Chair Rogers, is there a motion? Yes, um, I make a motion to um, grant this application. Is there a second? Commissioner Holmes, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And none opposed. So the petition is granted. All right. Moving on to our violation matters. The first one is Core Empowerment LLC, DBAC, the licensed premises for 01 East Center Street, Jamaica Plain, license type recreational cannabis dispensary license. Um, this is an alleged incident on the armed employee on premise in violation of MGL chapter 94G section four and board's rule 3.01 and 3.06C. Chairman Joyce, do you have any comments? Yes, um, my notes, um, they fired this employee immediately and the licensee was cooperative. Um, I think they took appropriate measures having once it was brought to their attention. Um, those are kind of my comments. Do you want me to, uh, I can let anyone else jump in. Commissioner Holmes, do you have any comments? I, I agree. The, the, um, the management of core empowerment, once they were notified of what was happening, they took the appropriate, um, steps. They fired them. You know, they talked to the rest of the, um, and the staff about you know, the incident. So I, I don't think that, I think they handled it properly. I don't think they, they did anything it wrong. Thank you, Commissioner Camacho. I agree with everybody. Um, what else is there to do? Uh, fire the employee, uh, uh, call the cops, and that's what they did. Commissioner Smith. Thanks, Jasmine. Same, I think they hired, they handled this effectively. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. So again, these violation hearings are new to us on the cannabis side, but I'm gonna put on my licensing board hat and just try to follow what we do there. Uh, my motion is for no violation here. Is there a I second? Vote motion, my, yeah, my vote is. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Have all in favor? Aye. And none opposed, so no violation. Can I ask a question though? Oh, yeah. shut up. Um, does, even though we're voting, and like I said, this is new to you, Kathleen, it's completely new to me. Um, so does this go in their official file that they had a violation, but we just voted against it? Yes, we'll dock okay. it. And um, generally on the licensing board side, we have progressive discipline. So if this happened, okay. again, we would have that to look back at and we would have a first warning, a second warning, and then, you know, we would, come up with some other discipline up to that, whether it be closure gotcha. or- Okay, so they don't get any warning or anything for this one, right? No, we would okay. drop it in, the, um, in their file. Okay, thank you. So the vote is no violation for this. Mm -hmm. Right, moving on to our amendments. The first one is Rooted In LLC, the license premise is 195 Dudley Street, Roxbury. The license type is a retail recreational cannabis dispensary license. The license request is to change the corporate name from Rooted in LLC to Rooted in Sankofa LLC. 
Do any of the commissioners have any questions or comments on this proposal? No. No. No issues at all to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then opposed. Petition is granted to change the corporate name. The second item is High Street Cannabis Group LLC. The licensed premise is 200 High Street downtown. The type is a retail recreational cannabis dispensary license. And the license request is to approve license agreement between, license, between the licensee and Primitive Holdings LLC, as well as a DBA name change from, primitive, from the Primitive Group. Sorry, let me say that again. They also would like to add the DBA name Primitive Group. The licensee is also requesting for a change of ownership interest. Any questions in regards to this request? No issues. Okay. Okay. Sure. So approve the request. Is there a second? Commissioner Holmes? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And none opposed. Petition is granted. All right, those are all the matters before the board today. Our next transactional hearing will take place next Monday, May 10th at 1 p.m. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you.